Hello everybody, Chaz Large here with another Fix It video for you. And on the bench today, as you can see, we've got something rather big and different. It is a Magic Changer 400 disc karaoke DVD video disc player uh, made by uh, Samjin. Presumably that's either Chinese or Japanese, don't know which. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, it is a basically it's a big um, jukebox, if you like, um, and it's not playing discs and it's doing various other things as well, according to the customer. Um, apparently it switches itself on and off um, at random. Um, so there may be power supply issues. We don't know. Uh, but the biggest problem at the moment is that uh, this door, which should open to reveal where you put the discs in, um, doesn't seem to open properly by itself. Uh, if I power it on, um, yeah, actually it is powered on because I can see the video, I've got the video on my uh, monitor up there, um, and the display has gone blank, but it was powered on and it is showing uh, a thing there. Now, I've just pressed the power button on the remote, um, and the turntable has tried to start. If I press open and close, Normally this display comes up with all kinds of things, but the display seems to have just disappeared. It was working. Um, let's do a power off reboot. Maybe that will bring it back to life. Uh, <laughs> I think we've got multiple things wrong with this. It's going to take a while to diagnose it. Uh, but I think it, it may be there may be a drive belt or something. The turntable inside that you put all the discs in uh, seems to be working right there we are we've got the display back on now lots of things to learn there's a big manual that came with it to uh, to try and understand it because I've never seen one of these before but uh, it says open but you can see this door is partially open um, and so on and if I um, select uh, uh, open and close again down here you can just see uh, turning around is the turntable um, with all the discs in it takes up to 400 discs and this is coming back I think it goes to 400 and then that turntable will stop it's continuing to go and if I press open and close again it resets to disc um, 400 this knob allows me to turn this turntable to select individual discs you can just see that turning around there in the front and this number is changing uh, I have tried putting uh, a disc in there, but it doesn't load it into the mechanism, which I guess is at the back there. Um, so, uh, all kinds of things wrong with it. Uh, not quite sure what. So I think the best thing we can do to start off with is have a look inside uh, and see what's going on in there. So uh, let's let's go into uh, taking the lid off, which is, seems to be just four screws and one at the top at the back here. Okay, okay, let's have a look and see what taking the lid off reveals. Now, I've undone all the screws. It's not coming up cleanly as I would have liked. Oh no, tell the light, there's two more screws. I've missed them. Now, one screw was missing and this one's been put in at an awkward angle. So now we can lift the lid. So let's move it back here and have a look inside. All right. The actual CD player part is over here. And it looks like a fairly conventional CD player. I'm not sure if you can see in there, but I can certainly get the camera in there. So we've got drive belts over there for the two parts of the mechanism. We've got a fairly standard optical block by the look of it. So that's the turntable with all the discs in. Now I wonder what drives this door. 
that door is driven by is that driven by another belt around the other side of some kind There's the door, and the door mechanism is on like a sliding part here, which presumably that moves, or maybe not, maybe that's just, it. maybe it's on an arm that turns underneath. We can't see it being turned by anything. Let's try pressing the open close. I'm pressing open close, nothing's changing on the display. But that's so some ah. So that mechanism over there is turning. Right, so we can see that in there. And there's a dry belt and a like a cam mechanism there. See, as I'm closing the door manually, that should be loading the disc, presumably. So I hold the door shut and press the open close. So that's the bit that actually pulls the oh, two little grips there, which. That's trying to play or trying to load this one. Right, so let's le hold the door shut, press open. So that should return. And the manual says that it should open that door at the front there manually. But it doesn't appear to be doing that. Hmm, let's just go back to disk one and get gore old Gloria to go into disk one. So when you put the disks in, you put them in with the play side to the left. So I'm putting that into disk one slot there. So it's held relatively loosely in there. I'm going to press close. Oh, I've got held my finger on it. Please wait, it says on the display. This one. So it's loaded this one. And it seems to be playing it. I've not got any audio output, but on the bench camera we can see it's actually playing the disc. We can see the numbers are coming and the disc. So it seems to be working normally if I keep this door closed manually. So obviously the mechanism that determines whether there's a disc in there playable etc is is all working fine if this door is held shut manually i'm just going to let it go for a minute let me just try um open so it's now saying open so that should now take the disc out of there which it's done it's taken the disc out and it's now returning that back to the door now the mechanism is going through at the back here as though it's going to load another disc in but it's not opened this door now i've opened the door manually so i can take the disc out so i think 
what we appear to have is whatever drives this door is the bit that's not allowing it to move properly the switch assembly or whatever it is that's governing that seems to be okay so it looks to me as though what I've got to do is basically dismantle it to see how far it goes hmm I think what I'm going to do is stop there for a minute and see if I can find a service manual for this with disassembly instructions because as you can see there is a lot of stuff involved in getting down there and it may be something simple, but getting to it may be the difficult part. So, I'll be back after I've done a search for a manual. Right, well I've done a search for a service manual for this beastie and cannot find one. Uh, I have however found there's a company in America called Asonic which sell a branded version of this machine. Um, the only other references I can find to this machine are sales sites in China. Um, so uh, not a lot of uh, helpful information. Um, I suspect that the, the main problem with this may well be that the uh, mechanism at the bottom where that closes and open closes the door, I think that is probably jammed, possibly dust and dirt with the door being opened and closed on and off. It's going to be sucking in dust and dirt. It looks fairly clean, uh, but I think that's probably where the, li uh, the problem lies. So I'm going to tentatively dismantle it um, and see if I can see that information. It looks like it's going to be quite a complex one. Thankfully, all the connectors seem to be um, of a type where they are not going to, you're not going to get that plug to go into that socket and so on. So it's, it should be fairly easy to unplug all the plugs remove that circuit board off the top, gain access through by taking off these metal brackets, taking off the front cover, etc. Um, there seems to be, uh, whether it's been serviced or what, I don't know, but there's bits of uh, foam on the front here um, that um, look like they were possibly sealed or, or something, and then they've been removed. They're not in the the front cover there so i guess at some stage somebody's had this apart maybe to try and fix this problem couldn't fix it put it back together give it back to the customer so i'm probably the second maybe third or fourth person to have a go at it uh, or it may just have been you know like that from the factory i don't know anyway i'm going to go ahead we're trying to dismantle it so i should probably whiz through uh, bits and pieces of this i'll keep the camera overhead so you can see uh, what's going on We seem to have got into there fairly quickly. Hope you enjoyed that little dismantling exercise. So now we've got to see if there's something about the mechanism that we can see 
with the door. Let's turn it on its back. So we've got the door that moves around there. Ah, it engages with something in there. Was it? Yeah, it's not engaging with that. That's just a slide. Hmm. Difficult to know. So maybe that top can be released. This seems like a center pin, center screw. So let's try removing that center screw. It's actually quite loose. I wonder if it's just that. That was loose. If I tighten it up, it's now more rigid. Hmm. That seems to be better engaged in there. So could we just be lucky in that it was just a loose screw? We get a little bit more tightness. I wonder if it's worth at this stage just quickly putting it back together um, and testing it again. What have we got to lose? Right, having uh, stripped it all down again and uh, done a little bit of looking at things, uh, we'll take this central screw back out again. The one that was uh, loose before and just hold it with a decent magnet there we go and hopefully this seems to be quite loose if we turn that little um, turn it round so that the door slider can come through that hole and that top comes away and we reveal the actual turntable. Now that doesn't appear, appear to be fixed to anything so hopefully yeah that's going to be lifting out as well. Wonderful. So we're getting somewhere. Now here's the mechanism for presumably for turning. Ah that's the mechanism for the door. Now could it just simply be that this drive belt here is very, very slack? And that's probably why the door isn't opening and closing properly. Doesn't seem to have any problem with lubrication. Not quite sure what this mechanism does, but it doesn't. So, that belt certainly seems to be quite slack, but then the others are a bit slack as well. I wonder if it's worth seeing if we can drive that motor manually. So we've got I think it could well just be just a, a slippy drive belt, but it seems to be very stiff. Ooh. There's teeth at the bottom of that. Ah, oh, should it, oh, it should sit in that slot. There we are. That's probably why it's not going smoothly. There we are. That's better. Do you know what? I think I'm going to just run the risk of just changing that drive belt. Because I think it's it's probably just going to be that. Some loose belts we've got here. Well, 
Right, so that's the original. That's a new one. So that's quite a bit better. Yeah, it seems to be okay. Right. Let's give that a whirl. Right. We are now uh, reassembled. Hopefully changing that drive belt has solved the door problem. So I'm going to change to the wide cam to show this. First time power on. The door opens fully. It says it's open. Let's close. The door closes. Oh! And that hopefully means that it's just gone back to position one. Right, the power didn't bring it on. Power from the remote didn't bring it on. Let's go open. Okay. Power on. Open. Door open. Oh, it's beginning to look good. Where's Gloria? Come on, Gloria. Give us a song. I was ought to connect up my amplifier. So uh, that's in disc 355. So that's not the right. That says disc 358. So let's turn this to disc 1. 398, 399, 401. Right, now there's a button there that says temp disc. Let's try that. And go play. Nope. Let's go close. Okay, it's loaded that temp disk position. Let's press that. Mm. Okay, disk eject. Open. No idea what's going on here. The disk is ready to play, so let's just open again. Right, we're back with this uh, deck and I've been giving this some thought in that it was working before I took the um, the plastic movement uh, etc out and um, and it was working and I uh, it loaded a disc in and out even though the door wasn't shutting properly and so on having fixed that it's now taking the disc in but it's no longer loading the disc into the player and it's just got me wondering you know something else and it's also doing this weird thing where it's shutting down to sort of like uh, a blank screen and the screen goes off it doesn't power on power off so I thought hang on a minute one of the reports uh, from the customer was that it would switch itself on and off at random times and really what I probably should have done first off before I done anything else was to check the power supplies so let's little have a look at this uh, power supply right so i switched on my uh, multimeter that i can put on screen so you can see exactly what i'm going to be checking on the power supply etc is here in this part of 
the unit. Let's just plug it in and power it up. And it will probably do its thing where it trundles around, the lights come on and so on. The power supply is here and we've got a connector up here. And on this point here, we've got 12 volts, then 5 volts, then ground and ground. So let's just have a look at the 12 volt line. And at the moment, we've got zilch, nothing. The 5 volt line, which is that one, 2.17. Now that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right at all. Now there's a 9 volt plus and minus 9 volts down here. Let's see at that one. That's minus 9 volt. That's okay. And that's plus 8.99 volts. So it would mean that the grounding is right. So I was happy with that. So we've obviously got a problem with the, the 12 volt line. Now it's currently switched off. If I press open, the display comes up, but we've still got no 12 volts coming out there. So I think this actually the 5 volt line being 2 point something odd volts is part of the root cause of the problem because i think what's happening there is that um the fight the processor which i guess is this bit here can't handle the fact that it's it's just running at low voltage and that's why it's shutting off and, and doing funny things why the 12 volt rail has dropped completely, I don't know. But we'll have to get the power supply, uh, which is buried down here, out and checked to see what's going on. So hopefully, looking at the way this is mounted, there's two screws down below on the chassis. There's two screws on the back. And if I loosen that one, uh, hopefully I can take the whole power supply out in one go. Before I do that though, I just want to double check where this 12 volt rail is missing. I just want to check to see uh, if there's any um, short there. So I've powered it off and got my meter and just double checking that it is reading my meter. Ohms wise, that should show a short circuit virtually. So there's definitely no short on the 12 volt rail. So it's not as if it's being loaded down. Right, let's get this power supply out of here. So first off, unplug, even though it's switched off. So we can just release this screw just to give us a little bit of flexibility on there. We've got two screws at the back here through the chassis. So let's get this other screw here out. Right, power supply is clear. Let's unplug it from this board. The power supply is out. I think actually I might loosen this plate over here as well. Gives us that little bit more flexibility, hopefully. No? Okay. Let's take this out completely out of the way. That should make life a bit easier. We've just got the mains cables coming through there. Now I can unplug that switch and then hopefully just press these 
clips down here. There we are. Wiggle the heat shrink that we put around it. And then put that back over there. And plug that back in there. So, we should be able to now work on it. Let's get this deck out of the way. Okay, well with no um, circuit diagram, we're going to have to make some guesses. Looks like it's a fairly well insulated hot side, cold side division across there. So that's a, a plus. There's a bit of a scorch mark there on that. Uh, looks like that diode, in fact, there. Looks like it's got warm. Can we see any capacitors that are... Ah! Now, that capacitor looks a little bit grubby, but that capacitor there looks like it's definitely got a bit of a bulge to it. So I'm pretty much guessing that that capacitor is probably on its way out. Okay, so... Get the meter on again. Right, we've got the test meter on and working. Let's just make sure it's, yep, it's picking something up. So let's have a check first of that capacitor. Just make sure that it's not dead short. So it looks like it's across those two. Let's just see if there's any volts across it to start with. No volts, go to ohms. And it's 143 ohms. There's another similar capacitor across those two. Let's see what that one reads. 142 again, or is that, well, that's actually Pretty much across the same one that's a and that's a coil across there so it's basically these two capacitors across each other so the 12 volts is that one that's the way it was in so that's 12 volts 5 volts and two lots of ground so 12 volts 5 volts and that and there are both ground well that's definitely ground let's just make sure those two grounds are connected we think they should be yep okay 12 volts 5 volts and those two point three of an ohm. Right. So, as we suspect this capacitor here is beginning to bulge just slightly at the top, could it be that it's losing its capacitance? Let's just double check where that diode was. I don't think that diode's on the 12 volt round, but let's just double check that the diode hasn't gone short or anything. No, it's not gone short. We reversed. Yeah, it's got some capacitance across it. So the 12 volt rail comes from this transistor here. Is that right? No, 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 no. Let's get it around the right way. So there's 12 volts. Is that one? Let's make a mark on there. So that's 12 volts. That's 5 volts. That's ground and that's ground. Always helps to mark things so you can remember them. So let's just double check down to ground from the 12 volt line. There's no short circuit, the 12 volt rail. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? 12 volt rail comes round to this bit of printed circuit board and there's nothing there. 
that'll explain why we've got no 12 volts the 5 volt rail however is connected across that capacitor so there's the 5 volt that's just must be something that's been left over from a different model or something I would guess that 12 volts so we can we can scrub that can't we and put not connected right so I think I'm going to jump on the fact that it's at 5 volts is root caused by this capacitor so let's take that capacitor out check it and replace it now is my desoldering gun up to temperature how long does it take to get to I just bought a new desoldering station um, based on a suggestion by Knowles Retro Lab um, who does retro computers so uh, I've used it once it works really well but I think it does take a while to warm up okie dokie so let's have in the meantime let's have a look at these capacitors see what they are they should be a thousand mic at 60 volt 16 volts rather and is the other one the same thousand mic at 16 volts right let's get some capacitors out right so I'm going to stick the meet onto capacitance and just check these these are brand new capacitors I only bought a little while ago so let's just check and see what the capacitance meter tells us these are give it a while to build up a charge 991 it's good enough for me just check this one as well One hundred and fifty-nine. That's close enough to a thousand, Mike. Okay. Let's get these beasties out of here. Now the thing is with taking capacitors out is that it does leave you with a problem that taking them out can actually fix them. So let's try and do this as quick as we can. Okay, so they're both loose. Let's take them out. So that's the one with a bit of a bulged top. And this one's not so bulged. So let's see what they read. Now we've taken them out. Oh, hundred and one going down. Ninety-seven, ninety-four microfarad, and that should be a thousand microfarad. Let's try this one. Don't read a like read something. Just make sure I've got a good connection. That reads one point 
1.2 microfarad. Let's just read these again. Short them out first. Yeah, definitely 990. So I think those two are definitely for the chop. Right, so on the board, lines on there is the negative side of things. In fact, actually you can see on the board there is what looks like leakage. Capacitance leakage. Right, so let's pop those in there. That one in there. And there's a little bit of leakage mark on there as well. I'll get that resistor too close to that link. So, positive. And there. Okay. Let's solder them in. the heat do the work. Not quite nice. The only thing with power supplies is sometimes they require a load to work properly. I don't think these will. I think this will work all right. So just quick turn it on, make sure it don't go bang, which it doesn't. And then we'll put the meter on to volts. Let's turn it back on again. So that's ground and that's five volts. And that is now a nice five 0.1 volts. Perfect. I think we have solved part of the problem. We should now be able to put it all back together and see how we go. Okie dokie. Let us now try Again, make sure that's nothing shorting out. Let's plug that into the board. Plug it in, switch it on. To the display. It now says load, which it didn't have before. That was definitely the drive is opening. Okie dokie. Gloria, are you going to give us some music? Okay, let's have some sound connectivity on the back. Okay, let's go one and see what happens. So it's doing a full circle. Let's now grab the disc. Emergency. 
Yay! Oh, let's turn the sound down before we get content matched. Yeah, okay. So whilst that's playing, let's try putting, let's open it. Right, so that stops that disc. Okay, so that was in disk one, and disk one is aligned correctly. Let's try another disk, YouTube mu Music. That's good. Turn the monitor on. Let's see what the monitor gives us in terms of video output. So we've got that. So we should be able to now turn this to another disk. So let's go disk 10, which we've done. It's moved it along to there. Yeah, let's put um, let's put a video because it's supposed to play video discs as well. So let's put a video into disk 10. And let's move it on. Say so disk 20, which is there. Let's put that one in there. Okay, dokie, yeah, let's close it up. I think that's what the opto sensor on the side is doing. It's uh, it's counting the number of discs. So it's gone donk donk donk. So it's just seen three. So it's now loading disc twenty, which is the audio music. Yeah. So it's playing about that. It's amazing what a couple of capacitors can do. So let's try disc 10. This number. Let's go ten and enter. Ah, so we do it by remote control. So now it goes back to this ten. So this should now be our Wallace and Gromit video. It's reading it, so it's reading it. DVD. Yep. Hardman Animations presents. Yeah. So, that's good, isn't it? I think we are fixed. So, apart from not knowing how to drive this beastie, um, worked out that it does work, and it seems to be working okay. All I've got to do is now redress these leads at the top. Um, put those... Um, cable ties back in and tidy it up and give it a bit of a clean because it's a little bit on the messy uh, I think what I'll also do is I'll also change the two drive belts on the motor at the back so let me do that because that's a lot of fiddling and I can't really get the camera in there to show you what I'm doing so let me get that done and then you can see the end result Right, so here we are then with the um, um, jukebox. <laughs> it's got blue laser on there. I don't know whether that's original or whether that's been somebody stuck that on there, but it's not a Blu-ray player. Uh, it won't play Blu-ray discs, but it, it may have a blue laser in it. I don't know. Anyway, um, redressed all the, um, uh, the cables on the circuit board, refitted the power supply correctly, all the screws are in. In fact, I've added a couple of extra screws that were missing from the underside. So then we just close, it should just do a full circle and it will just sit there. So all the problems on this in terms of it doing funny things were all down to the 5 volt rail not being nice and smooth because those capacitors had failed 
um, but we also had a little bit of a jammed up mechanism here because um, I'm not sure what happened why that's done that but anyway we solved that but we also replaced the drive belts uh, as well because they all look a little bit on the dodgy side so that's it I hope you've enjoyed that little repair on this uh, CD jukebox it's called a magic changer 400 disc um, multi-disc player whatever you want to call it that's what it is um, and it's been quite an interesting little thing I think this is actually sort of I wouldn't say it's a professional device um, it's more a device I think you know for commercial use um, it seems to be laid out with the uh, access to the service to the circuit board and the power supply at the back being very easy to get at it's probably built so it can be repaired uh, thanks very much for watching take care see you on another video